the museum. It's directed by Konstantin Lupanchki. Um, like a lot of Russian films, it's available legally on YouTube or through the Tor browser. Um, unlike a lot of Russian films, though, this was not shot with a GoPro mounted to a Volvo. Uh, this was shot on film. Uh, the film was uh, made in 1989, and uh, the cinematography was by Nikolai Pakostov. Um, which I pronounced wrong. Um, it's a really interesting post-apocalyptic film. Uh, the post-apocalypse production design is very reminiscent of things like um, Mad Max, A Boy and His Dog, or, you know, Wally. There's others, but but what I mean by that is um, a post-apocalypse where, like, it's not necessarily a changed world. It's, you know, vestiges of the old world that sort of characterize everything. Um, uh, all the, the sort of atmosphere and everything is very recognizable for things that we would see, but, you know, um, uh, obviously degra degradation is set in. Um, the film result revolves around a scholar. Uh, the scholar is trying to find a museum, and now it's not really described what the museum is at exactly, but from what we um, see when we, we watch the film is the museum is sort of representative of um, um, what the old world was like, you know what I mean? It, it's, a, it's a collection of artifacts. The irony, of course, is that people are surrounded by vestiges of this old, old world everywhere they go. In fact, one of the first parts of the film is, is it's in a landfill. So, um, you know, there's this interesting idea that he's chasing this kind of um, plutonic ideal, but he can see that the real museum is all around him. And I know that sounds really cliche and stupid, but you know, that that is literally what I think the film is 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 saying. Um uh, the, 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 the interesting thing is that there's like a kind of a caste system in this two film. There's two different classes, right? There's the everyday people, but then there are these other people called uh degenerates. And the degenerates are these sort of um intellectually deficient or a uh, uh, group of people, you know, you could say that they're retarded or that they're, you know, um, um, clearly suffering, you know, they could be crazy. It's not really established, you know, they've got some physical deformities too, but they're, um, they are kind of relegated to being servants um, and, or at least also put in these sort of like ghettos, you know, these, these camps, you know, where they have their own civilization. Um, the dominant ruling class is is um atheist you know they're a religious you know they don't have religion and uh when they come into contact with these uh with the degenerates that they've decided to make slaves some are some aren't um they make a concerted effort to beat out the culture from them you know what i mean they they, they try to beat out that religion um and we get this has been going on for some time um they have uh an interesting uh prayer um um uh, the the degenerates do um in, in what remains of their religious services let us get out of here um and it's kind of done as this sort of banal shriek to to um you know their lord or their savior or whatever um the way the services happen is actually very reminiscent of the orthodox greek church the way the chanting happens um, um even the fact that it like happens in a cave which actually uh, would um really harken back to stuff you know the way those services would be carried out during you know the ottoman occupation of greece for hundreds of years which is where those you know that was actually when those services were kind of pushed into those caves so i found that personally very interesting as someone who's who's greek and of course russians are you know orthodox as well um um but you know that prayer is really interesting because um, you know, it is it, it is sort of this uh, banal shriek about like this existential dread, you know, let us out of here. You know, there, there's no sort of prayer for salvation or sort of like none of the other things that we, you know, we're used to in religion, like being a good person or kind of um, uh, uh, how, to, how to navigate a sinful life. There's not even really an acknowledgement of, of, of sin by them. They've been so... They've had their 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 instincts and their sort of philosophical institutions so beaten out of them that they're they're on, they're only left with the existential dread, which is of course what religion is meant to contend with. You know that kernel remains though. So no matter how much you torture and subjugate and and beat someone, you can't ultimately remove that 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 acknowledgement that that you are in an existential hell and that you need some and that hopefully something can rescue you from that. 
Um, it is, it, it, it is of course not irrelevant that the ruling class doesn't have this, of course, because they leave, uh, they lead um, um, by comparison a very comfortable life. You know what I mean? They, um, it's something that uh, I guess the best way to compare how these two things are juxtaposed is like an apocalypse now. You know, like how you 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 or heart of darkness. <laughs> uh, you 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 have these kind of um um deliberate attempts to recreate the civilized world in in midst chaos um so uh, uh something else i'd like to talk about is that this towards the end of the film the scholar um, makes his way towards the museum which is um it, it, it's surrounded by water and tide but the tide subsurges you know it, it pull, the water pulls back and then you're left with a desert and then you can make your way to the museum so um there's a dream dream sequence and things get very esoteric but eventually he does so and when he when he reaches the the place where the museum is he's left with a barren empty wasteland there's nothing there except birds and it's empty and then he starts having this agonizing horror you know what i mean and he starts you know praying god like you promised and there was supposed to be something that was there and something like that and this is interesting because we don't think of him as as part of the degenerates but we realize that he does have sort of those religious inclinations that people of his class aren't necessarily supposed to have and it's also interesting too because it like his his pinning on the on the museum like the the last vestiges of civilization and humanity isn't there he's left with nothing but the existential horror of what the world really is right now um and I think, and I think that you know, it, it's an extremely nihilistic ending. It's horrible. It, you know, it's incredibly depressing, but it's and almost a little bit funny in that way. But um, because it renders the the whole trip pointless, but it does sort of, um, it does sort of harken to the point that that you know the 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 ideas of culture and history, you know what I mean, while useful and and are in, and are interesting. Um, sometimes we, we put so much effort on them because we can't look at the reality around us and that, what that might tell us about our current human situation. You know what I mean? He's constantly um, surrounded and exposed to things that, that tell the story of humanity as it is right now. And a lot of those things are artifacts of the past, but of course he looks past it because he's looking to this idealized version of that. You know what I mean? He's working towards something that um, would probably be a little bit more comfortable you know it might be more sanitized um, but it doesn't exist it's a fiction it's something that that they've that they've made up to kind of dis distract her from contending with the, the everyday horror around them um, and I, th I don't think it's it, it's also a coincidence that in the story um, or the film rather uh, a lot of people die in their way to make it to to this to this uh, museum you know like he he says everyone who they you know you hear stories everyone who tries to go there disappears or they you know or, or they drown or all, all the all these sorts of things you know they get lost along the way um which you know is is probably a very obvious you know nothing in this film is subtle everything i'm saying is is, is very much on the surface um but it, uh, sort of a very, very sort of obvious um, metaphor for, you know, the human pursuit of that ex existential answer. You know what I mean? We, we, when we all, ultimately we all die along the way, you know what I mean? We, we never achieve, achieve salvation, at least in this world, whether you believe it, it's real or not. Um, ultimately the end answer for all of us is, is, is death. And so few of us, of course, have the answer revealed to us in the current, in the current world. You know what I mean? Like we never, we don't, we never really get that answer. We get maybe a stronger belief in it, but we don't ever sort of have, um, we never find the museum. None of us, none of us find the museum in, in, in this life, at least. <laughs> um, so uh, obviously this was made, um, and I don't know, you know, my history is, 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 not great um but but this is toward made towards the end of the of the soviet union you know what i mean so it's obviously dealing with you know it's a product of of you know probably economic hardship i think at this time you know it was it was a lot of the 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 soviet institutions were crumbling you know what i mean so so it deals with that but i think you could definitely um someone who who has read a lot of russian literature would probably draw compar comparisons to that as well i mean it, it you know just the way it incorporates that idea it's very much at least 
from what I've heard through osmosis in the Russian tradition. I haven't read any of that stuff. I'm just talking out of my ass right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, a visitor to the museum. You can find it on YouTube. I'm going to put a link to that um, so you can watch it. Um, really enjoyed this film. Uh, I mean, the high point of this film is, you know, I like all the existential ideas are really interesting to me. But, uh, you know, the cinematography, the production design, there, there's just it's very rich in all those things. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just a pleasure to watch. So hope that you do. Unfortunately, I will be doing more of these. Um, so please, uh, you know, if you have any requests for future episodes, please uh, let me know. I won't honor any of them and I probably won't even read them. Um, but even more importantly, uh, if you have any criticisms for how I can make this better, or what, you know, might have gone wrong in this episode, uh, please let me know those. Um, I have a backlog of maybe like 400 of these that are all equally bad. And I will be sending those to you over the period of the next two weeks at like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Um, and then I'll also send you a series of very mean and harsh comments about your profile picture. So um, definitely let me know, you know, what a piece of shit I am, how bad I am at this and what a mistake this project was because I'm receptive to that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, criticism is important for all of us, um, especially you who doesn't like the show. All right. Thank you very much. And, uh, uh hmm.